Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to solve problem 15 of chapter 6. Members AB and BC can each support a maximum compressive force of 800 pounds, and members AD, DC and BD can support a maximum tensile force of 2000 pounds. If A is 6 feet, determine the greatest load P the truss can support. So two of our members are going to have compressive forces. And then the other three are going to have tensile forces. And we want to find out what would be the maximum P that we could apply that none of the members fail. So we need to find the force in each member based on the external force P and then determ determine which member would give us the limiting factor in how much we could apply. Uh, so our first task is to find the reaction forces. If you look at the image, the image is, uh, our truss is symmetric. And whenever we are going to judge about the symmetry of a truss, we need to have um, three conditions. We need to have symmetry in loading, in geometry, and also material. I mean, in a static, we don't deal with the material, uh, but here we can assume that the material is the same, the geometry is symmetric, and the loading is symmetric as well. So we have all the conditions. So we can say that truss is symmetric. Uh, so if we if you write uh, equilibrium equation, we can find the reaction forces here and here. So the force P is going to be distributed equally between joint A and joint C. We want to find all the reaction, all the forces in each member. I can do that by finding, by analyzing only two joints. Joint A will give me uh, force in member AD and AB. And if I analyze joint D, I will get member C, B, D, C, as well as member B, D. And we already know the truss is symmetric, so we have the force in member B, C as well. So let's start analyzing joint A. So I need to draw a free body diagram for joint A. So I know the reaction force is upward so that's p2 i have the direction and i have the magnitude then i have my force f b a that could be in this direction or the other direction to cancel it it has to be in this direction then i have a force f a d that would be in the opposite direction and they would cancel uh, each other's x uh, component and this this problem uh, because we have the two four two members both of them are going to have x and y component uh, so finding a direction uh, might not be easy and we might not be able to do that but we can assume a direction and at the end if we find a negative value that means that the direction that we assumed is incorrect but the other way to look at it is that the problem has already given us which members are in tension and which members are in compression. We know member FAE uh, is going to be, sorry, member FBA is in compression, so it's going away from the member. And AD would be in tension, so it's going towards the member. But that would be the free body diagram of our forces. I'm going to use typical x and y coordinate i need to find the dimensions here here is a and if we add these two would be a so we are dealing with one one square root of two triangle here and here would we have a and one fourth of an a so we are dealing with one four square root of 17 triangle for these two members so if i put it here one four square root of 17 and here i have one one square root of two 
So summation of forces in X. I have two components. I have FAD. The horizontal component would be 4 over square root of 17 minus FBA. 1 over square root of 2 would be 0. And summation of forces in Y equals 0. Here I have three components. I have FAD. 1 over square root of 17 because I want to find the vertical component. Then plus half of P minus FBA. 1 over square root of 2 equals 0. So here I have two equations and two unknown. I assume the value for P is known. I want to find the two uh, forces based on P value. So I can find the forces FBA to be 0.943P. So I found the force as function of P and it's in compression. The value that we found is positive, so it confirms our assumption. FAD 0.687 P and it's in tension. So we found two forces based on the value for P. Now, I want, now we're, we're going to go and analyze joint D to find the other unknowns. So if we analyze joint D here. At joint D, we have the force P is being applied. We have FAD, which is in tension, and we already found its value. So we know the value and we know the direction. FAD, 1, 4, square root of 17. We have FDC. According to our truss symmetry, uh, we know FTC and FAD are going to be the same. But even if we don't use that assumption of symmetry, you will see that if we write summation of force in X, we will get the same answer. And also FDB, which has to be in tension, so it would be towards the member. Even according to free by diagram, we know FDB should be going towards positive y to cancel the other two forces so if i write summation of forces in x that's kind of a redundant equation but i will get that fdc would be the same as fad summation of forces in y direction i have fdb minus p and fdc and fad are the same thing so I'm just going to write negative 2 FAD 1 over square root of 17 equals 0. And we already found FAD in the previous problem here, in the previous joint. That's the value of FAD. So I'm just going to plug in the value. So T is for tension and P is... The external force. So I can find FDB to be 1.33 P. So if you look at our forces, it looks like this one is carrying the largest load. So this one should be the limiting uh, member. But we need to pay attention that the compressive strength and tensile strength of our members are not going to be the same. The compressive strength that our members can have would be 800 pounds and the tensile limit would be 2,000 pounds. So because that member has the highest force, doesn't mean it's going to fail first because that's going to be in tension and tension has a larger capacity as the problem statement uh, gives us. So let's list all the members and their value so we see what conclusion we can make. The members that are in tension 
door f dc f a d we found the value to be 0.86 p and we have f d b which is born 0.33 p and remember it's were in which are in compression we have f a b more f b a 943 and we have a fbc which is 0 0.943 uh, as well according to symmetry so for tension the maximum force that we can have is 2000 pounds and for compression, the maximum force that they can handle is 800 pounds. So what would be, we are going to find the force, the value for P, that is going to make our members to reach this maximum 2,000. So finding the P in tension that will cause our member to fail. So if 2,000 divided by 1 point. 3, 3. This is the member intention that would be more likely to fail. We find a value for P. We do the same thing for compression. I'm going to call it P compression. And that's the force that will cause our member to fail in compression. 0.943. It gives me the value for compression as 848.53 kN. So let's look at it to see what it means. This value of 1503, if we apply this external force, it will cause our member FDB to fail. And if we apply this force, 848, it will make our member FBC to fail in compression. It will cause the force to reach the maximum allowable force. And which one is lower? The compression one. So that's the maximum that we could apply. If we apply more than this, our member BC will fail. So we have to, uh, we have to apply a force less than that, and that would be our answer to this question.